That's right, guys. Get yourself a good read. This guy knows what you're talking about, that's for sure. Well, this time we got a vintage issue for you. Surf bass fishing. I mean, it is the pinnacle of shore fishing for bass. It doesn't matter about the size of the fish when you're fishing on a surf beach. It's the place, it's the venue itself. And I've got vintage footage. Don't ask me how old it is. It's old. But I've managed to get it digitised, get it into the edit suite, and I've cobbled together a little bit for you so you can see what sort of sport you can get. And I believe you can still get if you take the trouble to go fishing from a surf beach. Now, before I fire off and go back 25 years in my time capsule, I think you'd like to see the rig I use. It's highly complex, probably even mentioned in here by this bloke. Let's get into the totally awesome office and I'll show you the rig I use 20, 25 years ago. Do you know what the point? It's still working now. Oh, you've got to laugh and you've got to laugh. Well, you'd cry otherwise, wouldn't you? Well, here at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, we like to keep things simple, basic, just go fishing and catch a few fish. Let's crack on with this rig. It is just a simple two hook paternoster. For the shock I'm going to use, because I'm not casting a long way, usually use 50, but just for this it's red so that you can see it. This is what is it? It's 40 pound storm fire. There you are, you can see it nice, bright, and red. You can actually use this for shock if you're not casting very hard. I like 50 better to be honest. Um, this is good, you should be able to pick this out and you can see this. This is for the shock leader. So I'm going to take, peel off, I'm going to do it towards the camera there, you can see it, let's say four feet, five feet, something like that. Snip. Herein lies the problem. As you get older, you may require a pair of these for tying fishing knots. I can see the bite tucker and the rod top is the fishing knots. Now, what I use as well, and I like these, this is called, do you see it there, a cross lock swivel and it does not open up easily. Very, very strong. We actually use them big game fishing. This goes on the bottom with a tucked blood loop. Spin it round for five, through the loop. And I'm just gonna pull this one down. I won't do a tucked one, just gonna show you this one. Slide it right down, nice and tight. And I'll tell you something else I noticed. On a soft nylon line, it, the knots pull down, but on abrasion resistant lines, I found they tend to stick a bit. You have to wet them more. So <clears throat> that's on one end, right down the other end, we put a barrel swivel. Now I'm just gonna be using a large one here. Generally I'd use something like about a 2-0, but this is hopefully so you can show you in close up. And then this goes on the other end of your red shock leader. I'm not going to bother tucking it totally, there's no point because I'm only showing you the ring. Bit of spit, bit of new fillings in the teeth, pull it down, snip the tag in, that's off. Okay, now, obviously the lead is going to clip on the bottom there. About six or eight inches up, I'm going to make a blood dropper, which I roll over the line like this, and I go around four times. One, two, three, four. Put the main loop back through the hole. Now I'll use my teeth again. Pull it up. Now you'll just see that pull tight there. My goodness me, that was a very neat knock around. And notice how it stands off from the main line. I come up near the top. Just going to say a good two feet or so. Just from a swivel, I'm gonna roll it around again. Here we go. Just make that loop the size of a large orange. That's about the size of it, I would say. Any longer the loop tends to sort of collapse a bit. Which if you keep it fairly short, I think it stays more rigid. Pull away. Bit of spit, you might see that pull down. There we go. Bop, and look, beautiful, okay? So, what I'm gonna do now is take this handy yellow, pinch a piece off of there. This is my snood. I'll whiz a hook on here. I'm using, by the way, 2-0 Partridge Aberdeens. Now, generally an Aberdeen's quite a fine wire hook, but I find these ones are plenty good enough for bass, and they don't spring out too much. You can get some makes of Aberdeen, 
And because they're fine, because they're basically for a worm hook, they do actually spring out. You can bump fish off. If you haul on, haul on the fish too hard, you're going to open the hook. And then what happens, it comes off, a bit more spit, pull that one down. Now, little tip here, guys. I leave, I guess, about just over an eighth of an inch tag end sticking up there, because when I pull a worm over, it pops, it helps it slip sliding back down the bed. You don't want the worm in a great big gobby bunch on the end of the hook. So I've got this there ready. Now, all I do now is I measure from here about, there's my, that's where my legs go in, that's where my drop is going on. I would say about 12 inches, that's all I want. So I get 12 inches with my snood line there and I just do a double, a surgeon's double out overhand loop. Quite short there. Proverbial spit again, pull tight, snip off. Now, what we do now, it's easier to see when they're together. I put this loop, the yellow loop, through the main line, put the hook back through here, the loop, pull it in. Now this way, I don't have to bite, bite it, cut it off or tie it off. I've got this looped on there, and that's going to hang off. Look, can you see that, guys? Leg goes at the bottom, that's hanging off perfectly. Same again with the top. It's a dead, dead simple rip this. And you know what, more importantly, it catches fish. Why make things overcomplicated when you don't need to? Ouch, the hooks are indeed sharp when they come out of the packet. So this one's gonna give me trouble, is it? I've done too many twists, I think I've done seven. Let's go slap off one. He's through. Quite important to leave that little tag in, I feel. Because that helps, you, you can use it long, but yeah, quarter an inch, something like that. Now, you've got one that's going to go down below the lead. This one does not want to reach that one. So you're going to measure down on the length of the trace to about there. I can judge it. I do my overhand, my surgeon's loops, a double overhand loop like this. Can you see this? Hopefully you can. Just pull it, a bit of spit, everything. Every knot pulls down better with a bit of spit. As you said, I'll pull that. Tag it down. These you can go really tight, you can snap them off. It goes, again I'm going to show you, it goes one loop, the yellow loop, the snood goes through the main shock leader. Hopefully I've colour coded this one so you can pick it up. There's a the snood, there's a the little loop, pulls tight. Hey presto, just look how that stands off. Can you see that? Look, perfect, perfect, perfect. And down here, oh my goodness me, I've got two standoffs. Now, on goes your lead. I've got these leads. I've used when you see the vintage footage, you'll be falling off your bed chairs when you uh, see what the lead is. But trust me, it works like all fish. You just spring these wires together as you grip it. If, if you're beginners, you don't know what they are. They they grip into the sand, and then when you go to retrieve it, you pull these these bang trip out. As you can see, look, they get catching the sand, bang, they trip out, and they're not dragging all the time. They can slide in like this. If you do get a big fish tape, decent bass, it will indeed sometimes pull so hard it actually breaks the lead out. So lead goes on the bottom. Obviously onto that cross lock swivel. I like cross locks, I have like cross locks, they're a fiddle to get on, but they don't really open up. There you go, there's the lead, there's the cross lock. There's the grip lead at the bottom. There's the cross lock swivel. Obviously it's gonna lay on the seabed, but you can see when you cast the, those, the blood loop, to the other loop makes it stand off in the main line really well. There's a single hook. You can put sequins on there. You can put rubber stops to stop the worm sliding up. I don't do any of that. There's the other one. Hangs away nice from the from the main line from here. You know, when you're casting, bang, it goes up nice and tight. And there's the other hook. And there's the barrel swivel. One final tip that you can do, because you're not really whacking the bait a long way surf fishing unless it's very, very uh, strong winds. You've got the standard grip net there you might get find you get a bit further without busting the bait by using one of these that's got veins to it if you can see there that's the two together it's got veins and it will fly better through the air so instead of this one maybe wobbling and oscillating and whipping through the air you know perhaps jerking this one should with those blades on the back like wings if you like bzz, straight through the air like a dart should be a bit better that's enough tackle talk i feel it's time to go fishing and remember guys this is a vintage episode it should be much better quality it's the best we could get because if you keep these vhs tapes a long time 
they just get what's called drop off. They fall off, all the metal comes off, and they're no good. So I'm very, very lucky to show you the type of fishing I was doing and getting 20 years ago. Let's saddle up and go. Well, the first thing you've got to do when you go bass fishing is, yes, to dig some worms. And whereas I would normally have no problem at all going into a tackle shop and purchasing said worms to save myself a lot of backache, in Ireland it's very, very easy. You've got to watch the tide coming in, as you can see here, it does come in pretty fast. It depends what part of the beach you're on, doesn't necessarily apply to Ireland. As you can see here, this is the speed of a flood tide coming in, and I believe this one was Dingle Harbour over on the Kerryhead Peninsula. So there you go, you get what they call trench digging, which is basically just digging, turning it over, and there are just so many lugworm over in Ireland. Generally, we just go in a straight line. This is a bit of a sort of a messy dig just for the camera to get an idea to show you some. But easy to find, there are acres and acres of worm cast in Ireland, all over the beaches, the tiny estuaries, even, you know, just in from, from river, river mouth, providing there's not too much strong scouring current there. You're going to get the worm cast which you can see and no trouble this is why we do what we call trench digging and you get great big lugworm i mean sometimes you get small ones but generally speaking a nice good bait sized lugworm from the many worm casts dotted all over the beach now one little tip i'm going to give you a totally awesome tip is once you've got your lugworm even if you get some busted ones and you can tell that because the sort of orange guts come out of them. I don't throw them away. Some of the people discard the gut, guts ones. I still keep them for hook baits at the end of the day because it's all juice and smell. But what you want to do is when you get them at this stage, you just dug them. What you do is rinse them in a fresh bucket of salt water, not fresh. Fresh will kill them. And then make sure you keep the juices because uh, a dead worm juice will kill all the other worms in there. You want a nice fresh lugworm like that one. So wrap them in newspaper, keep changing the newspaper to try and keep them dry. This is possibly the most famous surf fishing spot in Europe. Um, something like 40, 50 years ago, you could come here and these big sand dunes, you can see the dunes are held together on all this different grass. I call it marram grass. I don't know what the proper term is for it. And this grass actually binds together those sand dunes so that they don't, well, they do change in shape and size, but they're the absolutely massive sand dunes over on each strand at the back. Especially they're huge. And of course, you know, the last thing they want is to be uh, broken down or uh, people running all over them, but we've all done it. We've all, we've all gone up to explore, look for rabbit holes and stuff like that but it is an immensely beautiful place to go fishing. An inch strand is, is very, very long, sticks right out into the face of the Atlantic. Um, here you can see it must have been built up over millions of years and the grass helps bind all that sand together and in the back is the Dingle Mountains. Lots of different stuff lives in amongst here. I've actually seen foxes and I've actually caught fish put them on the beach, turned around and a fox came up and, and pinched the fish. So it's, you know, it's a beautiful place and there you can see it's strand in the background and that wonderful surf comes creaming in there. Several different tables of water. I was there, I think the guy's name was Dean Farley. I think he won a competition to go fishing with me, as far as I recall. And we were boat fishing, we got blown off and that evening we dived straight down to Inch Strand. This is, wait for this, this is a three hour evening session just on inch strand, we stopped at the first bit we came to and away goes the fishing rods with that lugworm bait and as I told you that two hook paternoster is all you need, gripping at the bottom, a nice surf coming in, that is the secret to it. You want those tables of water just surging in like that, we struck it just right, there'd been a blow of wind, the surf was coming directly in the mouth of the, you know, to the peninsula, across it putting a surf up there, not an enormous pounding surf, but important, it was just dying down. And that's the conditions what you, you really want is a dying down, sort of after a storm, a sort of a bit of tidal surge. And if you can get that to coincide with an evening flood tide, folks, you are virtually guaranteed fish. And it was within eight to 10 minutes, I remember, Dean got hooked up to his first fish here.
Yes, sorry, there are no shortage of flounders when you go on a surf beach in Ireland, even down the South Wales coast, they've got some really nice surf beaches, but you know, Ireland is renowned for good flounder fishing. Not so much the place, they do get occasional plays. Now what they say is they say, you want to cast about between the second and third wave. But I think what they mean by that is the main breaking wave. So I would start from the outside, don't measure your waves from the inside, start from the outside and count the second and third one in. On this particular trip, we found some really weird jellyfish up, washed up on the beach. And the, the blob, the dreaded blob jellyfish, I have no idea whether it's poisonous, I wasn't about to touch it, but there were thousands of them just smothering the beach, all washed up. One assumes they come in there for some sort of spawning thing and, uh, you know, they just got washed up on the beach. My quick and easy leads of the time were to drill out an ordinary bomb, put two pieces of stainless or galvanised wire through them and elasticate them around the end. That gave me my grip lead. And then take my freshly dug lugworm, insert the hook, which was then a fine wire Aberdeen, but a sort of thickish fine wire Aberdeen, now thread it right around the hook, but you've got to get it to pop over the eye. So don't bust it, just support it as I'm doing there and just get it right up over there without busting the whole worm apart because these will still be fresh, they will still be soft and you want them out there with as much juice in the body that then goes out into the ocean as well. And hopefully, I think fish like the flounders possibly smell that juice coming out the lugworm, which I think the, the bass being visual feeders, I think they absolutely spot that lug worm washing around at the bottom. So thread the worm up using the wire of the hook to support it, right into the tail of the hook, get every bit up on there. You can use two hooks, but I find no need to it. And then basically, as the saying goes, just add water. You can cast on the shore, but if you get a pair of ordinary thigh waders, you can get out that much further. Um, you can use multipliers, they will cast generally further than the average fixed ball, or if you want to go even further still, a pair of chest waders. And then work your way up, which will gain you probably 20 or 30 yards, because inch strand, like a lot of surf beaches, is very, very shallow. And that's why those tables of water are creaming in like that. All you have to do, in this case, is just using a regular shorter rod fixed ball reel, whack it out as far as you can, trying to reach that gap between the second and the third wave, leave the bail arm open on the reel, and then, or if it's a multiplier, put it in free spool, walk it back up. You can either hold the rod, or in this case, I found a three-legged broken plastic chair washed up on the foreshore, and obviously I pushed the three legs into the sand, and lo and behold, I can fish in luxury. What you do get here is you're going to get, even on any sort of flat surf beach, you're going to get what's called lateral tide flow. That means it's going from side to side depending on whether it's flooding or whether it's ebbing. It's not just coming straight in and straight out. And you can use that to your advantage because you can walk up tide of the current, cast out, and then as you walk back to either your rest or your monopods, if you want to put them in there uh, as a support, you, you've got the current, you just spool out some line, let that current put a belly in the line, and that pulls it all nice and tight so the grip leads hold in tight. Another thing we do here, a bit unusual for some people, I'm actually going to put some fish back alive. Now, I put a lot of fish back alive, I also eat a few fish, not great fish eater, don't like the bones, but I don't know, there's something about surf fishing with it's sort of wild open facing the Atlantic. You just sort of seem to respect those fish just a little bit more. And I think it is generally the surroundings that you're fishing in. You know, you might have a wild, rugged mountain countryside around you and it's just pure clean water surging in there. And let's face it, they really do deserve to be put back. Here we go again, just another good flounder on that rig. Just straight lugworm, nothing fancy on it at all. And, you know, if you want to keep a few fish, you probably get a couple of fillets off of uh, two or three fish aside, enough to give you a good meal of tea. Uh, for me personally, a bit... You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a great eater, the flounder, you can eat them, but much better to get them to uh, to swim away like that. Now here's Dean's got a nice flounder there. They do get some big flounders in Ireland. Um, even on the South Wales coast, you can uh, get some nice surf beaches there, and they will throw up some good flounders as well. Now, flounders will take in a flat calm, but you've got to have those conditions. Now, look at the water surging in. It's coming right up the beach as he puts that, uh, that flounder back in the water, return it. So it's a flood tide situation. And then when you do get some good fish, 
you start bringing them in. If you get anything that looks, well, sort of, or if it looks, even feels halfway vaguely heavy, just use one of those little wavelets that's coming in there. And I'm just holding the fish, just sweep it in and use that car to the wave to swing them in. What have we got? There you go. A double head or a double shot, a nice, nice flounders. Grip lead's pulled out. I can see the rubber band off the grip lead. Smile on the angler's face and blowing in the wind, a twin pair of flounders. Tails fluttering in the wind. One's a dark one, one's a light one. Hang on guys, this does not look like a flounder strike. This looks like something a bit different. This is what you really come to a big wild open surf beach for, is the silver bass. Again, walk it up the beach. If it does come off the hook, you're the seaside of it, so you can always trap it with your boot if you want. If it gets away, no big deal anyway, unless it's about 12 pounds and it certainly is a big deal. But these schooly bass like this, you know, if they're about in abundance, can give you some great sport. Beautiful looking fish, spines on those back. I mean, they're like a true proper fish, aren't they? A true, a true ocean going fish, these are, uh, for inshore anglers. And fishing off the surf, fantastic. It's gonna go the same way as a flounder. Yes, sirree. It's bass going back in the water, alive. That's gotta be something of a rarity today. But, you know, you can get a real buzz, let these fish go alive. You know, it's, it's, it's what fishing should be about. We can't keep killing all these fish and expecting them to last forever. And then with fish on these uh, single hook wings like this, you can use a double panel if you want to do it. You get a single hook wing as well. You get some nice bass like that. Uh, you can see immediately that a fish is ideal, ready for release. Um, don't damage the fish at all. What a magnificent fish it is. Just lay it in the water. As the wave goes back, off it goes. We finish this session, wait for this, eight bass, eight bass to four and a quarter pounds and here we go here's a nice bass this is what we call a proper bass walk it in using that little wave just easing it in that up the beach slide it up till it's almost well that's a term beached and there it is beached lovely beautiful fish there magnificent silver bar and i think you can see that rig that we used years ago the old school method just a two hook Paternoster fixed lead at the bottom. Does it work? Well, it worked back then, 20, 25 years ago. There's no question it's gonna work now. Look at that moustache, that boy's so good looking. Yeah, I'd give him the thumbs up myself. And that's another one that's gonna go back. This is Inch Strand. Beautiful, clean water. Look at the clarity of the seawater there. Just release it, away it goes. Superb sight, just letting a bass go away like that. There we go, all finished. At least this way you've seen some of the totally awesome fishing you can get. This was over in Ireland, Inch Strand in Ireland. There's many, many shallow water beaches like that. Hope you enjoy it. Get that rig out there and get on the open beach.